Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about a radio control calc sheet where version 1.004 was released here on June 1st. Now this calculator is constantly updated every single month with a new downloadable spreadsheet at the first week of every single month of the year. This thing is rapidly growing. For this update, the addition is a brand new radio control calculator tab plus some update to the radio controlled car formulas within that part of the spreadsheet and we'll go over both of these additions plus even a mid bonus update here that I just did within the last couple days here is the post where you can find where this link is located all you need to do now is click on the link that comes right after this line and we can jump over to that spreadsheet once that link is clicked all we need to do on this page is click main Make a copy. When we click make a copy, we are now going to take ownership of an actual spreadsheet, this one in particular, right inside our Google Drive account. So here is the main page of our spreadsheet. We have a few major points here on the bottom. All you need to do to use this is enter your radio controlled specifications into the boxes that are denoted in green. Any sub calculations that are done are made visible for the user that is you in blue and the whole point of the calculator is to calculate final results and that is going to be displayed in the yellow box. So let's take a look at our radio control car gearing speed and KV calculator. Here is a lot of different boxes in green where we can go and enter in information specific to this calculator. There are actually two calculators on this one tab. The first one here is going to calculate the speed of your radio control car and the one here on the right hand side is going to help select the motor KV if you're unsure of what KV would be best to hit your target speed. Now the update that was done to this spreadsheet deals with the RPM values in certain cells here. Now we have an updated formula to give us a little bit better of a result. Now let's take a look at our radio control boat speed calc tab. This can be found right here at the bottom. All we need to do is click that tab and this this is what we arrive at. So here is the boat calculator. All the values you see in green are values that you want to be inputting in here in order to calculate the actual speed you're looking for. The addition here for version 1.004 specifically plus is the nominal RPM. I thought this is probably one of the most important parameters that we can easily check and see for a radio control boat and this is going to help you guys out and I'll get to why and how very shortly here. To get started, let's select a system that is going to use a six cell lithium polymer battery. Now the voltage per cell is going to be what we expect that battery pack to be loaded at. If we don't know what to consider here, just leave this at 3.7 volts loaded. At 3.7 volts loaded, if your battery was fully charged, this would be a significant load. If your battery was around that 50 to 70% state of charge, then this would kind of make more sense for that. The reason why our radio control car tab actually has a very low voltage per cell for this is because under load, these speed cars are holding hundreds of amps, not just 100 amps or 150 amps. These things can pull easily upwards of over 500 amps under load, and you can see values even under 3.0 volts loaded. Not the case for our typical radio controlled boats. So here, this is why we have 3.7, and you can use values that you expect to make sense for you there. Now when it comes to KV, this is the big item to check and this is why the nominal RPM is actually going to make sense for us. Using a six cell lithium polymer battery pack with a KV value of 1800 is going to give us a nominal RPM of just shy of 40,000 RPM. This is much too high for the typical average boater just getting into the hobby, I would not suggest having a nominal RPM of 40,000. I would suggest being under that 35,000 mark. This will give you a much more reliable system and it's just easier to make it more reliable and safe on your components. That's the big key item here. If you wanna go fast and you're experienced, then that's on you. You can go above that 35,000 mark. 
So we're gonna go and select a different KV to make sense for our new build here, and that's gonna be 1500. We can check the 1500 KV, now does fall under that 35,000 mark, and if we're still wanting to be more conservative, we can check what a 1300 KV motor will do, and a 1200. All these KV options can do fairly well for the typical 34 to 38 inch boat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave that 1500 here at 33,300 RPM. The next value that we can change here is this load factor value. Now if you're not sure what this does or how to use it, just leave it at 12%. In short, this is because a typical motor will never actually achieve its KV value under load. So that is why we have a load factor to compensate for that value. Now let's move on to the hull type and the propeller pitch. Hull type, we can go and select a different hull type based on what we are actually building. Let's say, especially since we're very close to the maximum end of our RPM range, this would be best suited for an outrigger style boat hull. If you are trying to select a system for a mono hull or catamaran, you are better off using even a lower number than this nominal RPM value. We're gonna go and select outrigger. We even talk more about the selection and RPM values in another video here that I'll leave in the description below that's got a ton of good information and you can check that out. As for the propeller pitch, this is where we actually have to determine what the pitch in millimeters is. If we are using Octura props, this is actually quite easy to calculate. Let's, for example, take a look at a prop that is an X645. So that's what I have written right here. We want to know two things. We want to know what the pitch ratio is and what the diameter is so that we're able to calculate what the pitch is here. So I'm gonna go and pull this all out for you. The six here, the first character, is going to represent our pitch ratio. What we do is we start off with a prefix, one decimal, and that six is the first character in our part numbering convention that's going to represent our pitch ratio for us. We have 1.6 here for our ratio. Now for the diameter, this is going to be the two remaining characters, the last two characters, it is going to be 45. We have a 45 millimeter prop that has a pitch ratio of 1.6. Now all we do here is put the equal sign, we click this box, we hit the multiplication symbol, which is the asterisk, and we click our other cell, and we create this formula one times the other, that gives us our pitch in millimeters. Now we can go and place this into our box here, 56 is going to be changed now with a 72, and this is going to calculate our speed for this system. This is gonna get us about 106 kilometers per hour or 66 miles per hour. Now keep in mind, this is quite a significant speed for a radio controlled boat. This boat is going to pull a ton of power. We're going to have to have a system that is set up well enough to be able to handle this kind of power output to achieve this speed. That's gonna pretty well do it for this video. Now keep in mind, if you have not downloaded the plus version of this 1.004, version of spreadsheet, I would highly suggest doing that. That is because I have added this nominal RPM value, which I believe is significantly important for all of the radio controlled boaters out there, especially if you're just getting into the hobby. As always, hit that like button. If you do, don't forget to hit that sub button so you can see all the future updates as well as our more educational content that we're putting out on a weekly basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.